Um, hello, everybody, and welcome uh, to the presentation for the Department of Applied Materials. Uh, the department sits within the School of Fine Art, but it is unique in the sense that it has two standalone pathways within it. So there's textiles, art and artifact pathway, and there's hard materials pathway. So the textiles, art and art pathway when a student exits, they will have a named award. And this is, this is starting from this year. So by the time somebody qualifies in a few years time, your degree will be noted as a BA Honours in the Applied Arts. And depending on which pathway, whether your textiles are an artifact or your hard materials, it'll be noted on your award. So hard materials um, on your uh, exiting degree will be a BA Honours with ceramics or glass in the named award. So I, I, that, that is a sort of a new thing to our department. We're still under fine art, but it's actually now sort of allowing us to sort of um, make it more um, visual um, when it comes to actually applying for things, creating our portfolios. So it's a good thing to be able to now have students be able to sort of say they have their degree in the applied arts. So Applied Arts Department bridges between design, art and craft, whereby the materials and their materiality define the outcomes. Outcomes are process driven. We're all about the process. So we're thinking through making by experimentation, sampling and testing. The course imperatives are research, making, and finding a context to which your making is going to be realized and used. So the first of those imperatives, the research imperative, is finding ways to record, document, and research the, and your research journey. And it is about that personal archiving of all the work that you do and all, all the ways that you have ideas to develop. And particularly within TA, we have a thing called notebook generation, which is very sort of specific to TA, but it is also about finding that individuality approach in the way that you think, and they're able to sort of work through ideas. So that idea of notebook generation becomes very sort of personal, but it's, it's a sort of a, a piece of work in itself that students are happy to sort of show at the end in their degree work because it, it actually sort of gives all the substance and the meaning uh, to the way students are thinking. But some of the students haven't necessarily always liked doing the notebook in a traditional way with paper, but they understand that notebook itself, that idea of trying to capsulate all the thoughts, all the skills that will be used um, and this student actually way before Instagram and sort of blogging was trendy, um, found that that was the way that she was able to kind of record and generate this idea of here's the skills, here's the ideas, here are the things that I'm wanting to develop. So students find their own way of producing sort of this notebook, as we call it. The making imperative is still key to anybody in applied arts, where it's about that craftsmanship, sort of taking that ownership of the skills that you have and really trying to perfect them and hone them. And so that idea of sort of hand skills, as well as sort of, you know, other technology and skills is really important uh, to, to, to everybody in applied materials. One of the strong interests within TA is where students would take some material or uh, technique that is of a tradition that we've sort of had around for a long time, but the importance is to contemporizing it, making it new, making it more interesting, representing it in the narrative. So it's about moving those skills into some new relevance and meaning and um, uh, contemporizing. So lace would be a, a, a classic idea or the idea of taking stitch, those are uh, traditional embroidery stitches, but put, putting it into new products or new contexts. <coughs> this is another example of smocking, which we generally see in something very small scale um, because it's so time consuming and uses a lot of fabric. But actually this student <laughs> used smocking to have a gallery context 
and after making beautiful bits of smocking, then sort of deconstructed it and actually sort of um, totally kind of vandalized it, if you like. So that was sort of taking something traditional, but giving a, a very different reaction um, to where it was used and how it, how it would look. Something like knitting. Knitting is often think, seen as something quite small scale. And this student was referencing um, uh, you, your laces that you would have in your Dr. Martin boots that is actually a knitted construction. But in her case, she was taking um, <coughs> this object, excuse me, and actually producing a gallery. Um, this is monumental. It's something like 90 meters long of knitting uh, these laces. So this was about a sort of gallery use of that technique, but also then was able to sort of use it in artist residencies, community and social narratives. So it was really moving the knit into very different uses, usage. Knitting here, this student had a real interest in bespoke sort of fashion um, and created a whole range of really um, wonderful sort of fashion uh, garments, if you like but then actually found that her knitting, she, could, she was getting uh, worked for the electric picnic, or she was commissioned to do this work for the Kerry Gold Park. So again, taking knit and finding new contexts as new ways to be able to use it. The low tech compi uh, compiled, combined, sorry, with digital processes. So that's about using the sort of low tech skills, but that doesn't mean that they're less important. It just means that it's about that time investment with the hand work and the hand skills alongside the digital. So something like in this student's work was a hand embroidery stitch sitting alongside um, the, the, the digital processes of the multi-head embroidery. Or in this case, it's about digital print within digital multi-head embroidery, but then the use of handwork. So the, the doggy here is all done by hand stitch over all this other work um, sort of digitized. But also we use materials of sort of that sort of, you know, the everyday or, or the sort of cast away materials or, the, or materials that we don't consider. So we have a lot of students interested in working with paper. And, and paper for us actually leads very beautifully. It's just like another fabric. We don't sort of see it as sort of outside our realm. So a lot of students love working with paper. And this student um, worked with paper cutting, didn't use any laser. Actually, it was all about the hand rendering. And she was doing incredibly detailed um, sort of cuts with paper and using them in performance art and then working with her paper and into animation and video. So again, moving a sort of a, 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 a localized or a independent kind of um, individual approach to paper, but was able then to move it into animation and video and something performative. Recycling and upcycling reconstituted seems to be the sort of trendy buzzwords, but actually in TA, that's always been our mantra because we're always recycling materials or fabrics or things that we find. And we're always giving them another look or another sort of role or identity. Um, so we're reconstituting all the time and it is just something that TA has always done. But we move it away from just those notions of just materials and processes. We are looking to the sustainability of the practice. So when somebody comes to TA, we are all the time been very conscious of where could this lead you in the future? What kind of jobs might you get? Where, where, where can you offer and make a contribution to other sort of art and design contexts? So for us, the sustainable word is, is sort of huge for us because it's, it's everything that we do and think about. So here's that idea of um, recycling and upcycling with plastic. And instead of sort of, you know, um, plastic wa water bottles becoming landfill, here they're used to make sort of a uh, lamp, lampshade forms. And, and the shoe forms are made out of sellotape. So again, it's giving a new life and a new sort of role to these materials. And this student uh, became sort of classic hoarder. Uh, the studio was just chock-a-block with everything that she could find from skips. So every day she would pass and find new skips. 
she would take out things. And the hope would be that she'd be able to use and, and sort of make, make the things she found into her installation. So the only thing that she paid for in all her work was the red paint and the white paint. All, everything else was things that she found and was able to manipulate. Or something like that with this student, it's about finding something that there's a big resource for. So she was using the plastic, plastic corrugated plastic that you would see sort of for election, um, you know, the sort of posters that go up for election. So that idea of painstakingly then cutting them and making these little forms, and her ultimate then was to make these sort of um, murals or wall coverings, world surfaces. So it's taking a lot of what other people might throw away to be able to reuse it in, a, in another context. One of the very strong um, themes within TA is health and well-being. So what is very well known in the world of textiles is for those that actually participate in making the process of knitting, stitching, weaving, all of these processes actually have a sense of well-being for the person who uses them. Um, and so it's a really interesting thing how many people through lockdown took up things of textiles because there was a sense of feeling good, the process calm people. So there's, there's that knowledge, but there's also that knowledge of through textiles, people can start to try and visualize and explain and communicate what it is to have um, uh, certain you know, difficult sort of diseases or illnesses that we're not able to find a way of being um, sort of discursive or talk about. And through textiles, often we can break down those barriers. Dementia is a sort of, sadly, a theme that students are looking at. Um, as it, 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 and it can be a very sort of touching project. Um, and through, it's through textiles that it makes a sort of very touching projects, the outcomes. Or this work was actually around a family member who had Parkinson's disease. So again, it was through the textiles, through the teddy bears, and what, what the student had done was put in little motors into the teddy. So you couldn't see the tremor until you actually touched the teddies. This work was so profound, it was used within the, the ARC, you know, the Children's um, Museum and Art Gallery. And it was a real way of being able to get children to be able to express what it is to have somebody who's at home who's sick. Um, and, and that idea of the textiles and the teddy object was a, was a really powerful way to start communicating these subjects. Laura's work was looking at that idea of using textile and the very tactile and the touch sense uh, to help for visually impaired people to experience visual art. We don't consider that actually those who are sightless or, or have visual impairment, that they should have sort of some experience of visual arts. And actually textiles can play a really important role within that. Uh, this student was very interested in using her textiles in a very scientific way, looking at STEM research, and ultimately saw her use of textiles to, to do things around awareness campaigns. Narrative and social history and costume, um, clearly again another very interesting element for those interested in textile art and artifact, where it's also about costume, about knowing, um, been, been able to read, been able to uh, understand plays, theatres, um, different directions of film, and, and that idea of having all these other multiple skills alongside an ability to create costume for theatre, television, um, can, can be very interesting too. Or the idea that actually people are having to make their own um, forms, their textile kind of garments, if you like, for their own performance art. So that idea that actually, um, you know, we're not making for somebody else to wear, but we actually have to make um, things for ourselves in, in the artwork that we are if we're, if we're a performer. Uh, styling, branding and, pr and promotion is often seen as the worlds of visual uh, communications, but actually in TEA, we've had you know, repeatedly a number of students who absolutely 
um, are interested and have made real contributions uh, to working alongside and in design teams that are about styling, branding and promotion. And that idea of being able to sort of understand yourself what it is to be a good photographer, a good sort of art director. And this student, you know, um, we've had has gone on from success to success in the haute couture world, working with Chenille and, and having these opportunities of then also learning what it is to present their work styled and, and becoming, you know, that sort of the whole holistic idea of how you present uh, your work in a contemporary way. But there's also a lot about in TA about taking opportunities. Uh, where there isn't necessarily a defined sector for us and because we can cross so many areas of art design, participatory, art facilitation, education, health and well-being, that it's about seizing on opportunities and this was a great opportunity where some of us were able to show in Brown Thomas's windows our work and while you might sort of go oh no I want my work to be seen in the gallery, one should point out that far more people are going to look into Brian Thomas's window than will ever go to a, an art gallery in Ireland. So it's about finding ways of going opportunity. I want my work to be known. I want to get my name out. And it's about seizing those opportunities and really running with them. Sculpture and context, again, has been quite an interesting one. We tend to think textiles can only sort of sit indoors, but actually we've had students very interested in wanting uh, those sort of outdoor engagements with textiles. And another sort of area that's often forgotten about, but actually textiles plays a really big role, is in activism and protest. And actually textiles itself can be very um, subversive in the way that it can be used within protests. You know, obviously it can be used in banners, but it also can be do, uh, uh, to do with sort of badges and logos. And, and maybe there's something of a uniform or some sort of a garment that becomes part of that sort of identifying. So a really important aspect of textiles is in activism and protest. And as, uh, I think what is, is really important to understand is that everywhere in art and design, we have to be adaptive and responsive. But in actual fact, in, in TA and in the applied materials, we have seen that um, through lockdown in a very creative way. So in some ways, projects that would have never happened had we not had lockdown also introduced real different opportunities and different ways of responding and getting your out work. Uh, this work it ended up being so immersive that the student themselves were, were the artwork in the room that was changing and becoming this sort of overgrown green um, environment. So a really sort of important piece of work that I, I, I would say that was not going to happen had we not had the context of, of lockdown. So a TA student demonstrates an affinity with materials and processes, thinking by and through making, really important that. Uh, drawing and mark making and colour, that idea of working with paper, working with drawing, drawing is very central to us. Um, surface creation and manipulation. If you can manipulate any given fabric, you know, by folding it, ripping it, tearing it, that for us is actually, that's TA, that's, that's what we do. The sampling and experimenting and testing is crucial all the time. We don't make things out of our head. We have to try it, we have to sample it, we have to you know, question the processes. Craftsmanship, we absolutely honor. And, and, and it's about that investment of time where you build up that sort of knowledge of a technique. And we would ultimately want that sort of dedication um, um, you know, to be really sort of passionate about it to come to TEA. So there are diverse careers and opportunities. I would say there's no limitations at all to where it can take you. No two TA students are the same. So it is about sort of having that idea that it actually could be really exciting to go into the unknown and hope that the process will lead you to exciting um, new futures. So I sort of take a pause and now I introduce the second pathway of that is of the department and that's called hard materials. Um, 
And within that, again, just to sort of reiterate, as because hard materials are part of the applied materials, it is a bridge between design, art and craft. The course imperatives, again, are around research, making and finding a context, whereby the materials and the materiality define the crafted outcome. And it is also to sort of recognise within those that are interested in our materials, there's shared ways of thinking and making, where you're thinking three-dimensionally, where you're sort of thinking of things about mass and volume and form. And it is about allowing that, um, you know, glass and clay are the predominant um, uh, disciplines that students work with. But we have seen, and we do encourage that idea of, other uh, integrating other hard materials such as metal, cement, plaster, wood, stone, fiberglass, found objects. But it is primar primarily where we want to sort of see uh, glass and clay are the disciplines that are our platform, but we, we like the experimental of other materials coming in. So outcomes are process driven through experimentation, sampling and testing construction are tried and tested and we're looking at things of scale and balance and ergonomics so that idea of even trying it in cardboard or paper or you know through little maquettes is really really important learning and then shifting into will those material will this will the balance happen when I work with clay will that balance happen or the ergonomics happen with glass so that idea of continually working and sampling through maquetting and different materials, uh, the kind of problem solving, which is always uh, for, uh, it's that interest of curiosity within students of trying to find the best ways of working. The beautifully crafted and the beautiful object are again, are sort of key to applied materials. We, we really respect the beautifully made object. And so students, you know, we've had some such really successful students who have exquisite craftsmanship with the objects that they are making and, and, and been able to bring in that craftsmanship quality with an interest in sort of design, architecture, um, as well as sort of, you know, having a materiality sensitivity around sort of clay. So it's about that sort of honing and bringing the interest together uh, with the crafted work. You know, beautiful sort of objects that you just want to covet and, and hold and sort of uh, have on display. But it's also about pushing the traditional techniques. So in the case of this student, you know, you take the idea of the sort of potter's wheel, and it's often sort of thought that it's quite small scale, but this student really wanted to push the throwing technique into what more sort of monumental, more sort of architectural plinths looking. So it's again, you know, similar to TA in that sense of there's traditional skills and processes, but we're trying to um, uh, give them a new narrative. And this, this is a student who sort of really focused in on lamp work, in glass, and everything was about really perfecting the skill within lamp work uh, so that she was finding this was the way that all of her outcomes could be sort of manifested. And then within uh, hard materials, there can often be a real interest in coloration and glazes and sort of trying to find new combinations for finishes and surfaces. So, you know, not only for whether it would be sort of a kind of fine art outcome, but it's also in that way could be very interesting if there's people who are sort of more design uh, focused where they're trying to come up with new colorations and glazes for products and design. And it's again about embracing uh, new technologies. And so there can be the hand built, but there's also that idea of recognizing 3D printing, laser, um, uh, rhino, all of those technologies that um, students can get really excited through about sort of marrying those with their in it, uh, initial materials. And these are sort of works again that we're going through 3D uh, printing and rhino, but we're very much been produced for a gallery context. So again, that's sort of crossing over all the time 
is what applied materials does very well between fine art, between design and between craft. And these are actually two students that um, were in ceramics, but actually moved and, and made a direction into product design. So on the left, it's about little pouring vessels, so little teapots, little jugs, but very sort of contemporary in that look. And then the, the student on the right was looking at lighting. So again, that idea of, you know, wanting to embrace the students who are very design or product design led, as well as those students who might have other interests within fine art or sort of education. And so that integration of hard materials is sort of something that has been there and it's to sort of encourage it that there is that free flow between materials. And this student had initially started with glass, moved into mirrors and then into ELD lighting. And she was all the time experimenting with concrete and cement or the idea of glass and metal. So that sort of combination of two, um, two sort of skill sets would be needed. Um, and again, another example of glass. And in this case, it would be working with copper. Or this student sort of brings together, you know, sculptural identities as well as sort of, um, you know, ceramic mold making and that idea of sort of bringing together different materials in a holistic uh, gallery um, assemblage. And again, for uh, uh, applied materials, the idea of been looking at something that's discursive for social issues is very important uh, to us. And this was work um, around bullying in the playground. And interestingly, this student was a joint education. So that sort of idea of somebody who's going to be a teacher um, using their studio to sort of deal with sort of a very contemporary uh, difficult issues around uh, bullying. Um, or this was actually a project around um, refugees and, and needing to find a motif about spoons that was to some way narrate the story of sort of refugees and, and migration, that idea of movement um, and the belongings that people might have. Uh, this student was looking at the one and four, you know, the, the, the controversial uh, uh, stories around, you know, industrial ab uh, abuse. And again, marrying beautifully glass and ceramic in the narrative of, of a different set of projects that she was uh, wanting to bring together under this theme. Or this work was a ceramic student where um, that he made sort of vessels and then broke up his own vessels to create this form. And it was actually looking at um, male suicide in Ireland. So again, very, very difficult uh, subjects to orally talk about, but actually visual art plays a key role in trying to communicate and open up debate and, and a sense of having people sort of relate to the work. And this was an, another work looking at dimensional Alzheimer's. Again, um, sadly, it is a reoccurring theme because so many uh, people um, are experiencing it in their own life and in their family. So within uh, hard materials, actually, what can be really interesting is that idea of sound and video and interaction. And, and because there is sort of a particular noise and, and, and sound that can be generated through glass and through clay, it's a really interesting route to develop. Um, and actually, this piece was called sound installation. So it was sort of using the material to be able to uh, create sort of sound, another one of the sensory experiences within, um, you know, what, what, what we uh, work with. Um, this, this work was sort of made by a, a student, a ceramic student, um, for their MA work. But what was really interesting was actually its assemblage. So the piece is beautifully assembled in this installation, but it took over a week um, with a team who were all around and participating in the kind of construction, if you like, of the piece. So there is sort of something about actually that is sort of the, the backstage sort of uh, understanding about putting a work together, presenting it for a public, that there can be other very interesting dynamics that happen through the team that has to come together and work together. 
um, context being the imperative and in terms of when it comes to public commission, public art and public space, here you have this idea of you're all the time going to have to work with engineers, architects, there's going to be price, um, you know, there's going to be budget limits. So that idea of taking yourself out of just being somebody who might work with glass or clay, but see yourself as a project manager working in very collaborative, uh, different contexts and expertise is really important too. Um, you know, something like this was so um, a, a monumental piece of work that the, the glass maker here um, ended up actually sort of absolutely been the architect, engineer, construct and you know, project manager of this, this um, beautiful, beautiful project. Uh, sculpture and context is a very popular uh, testing place for students in, in, in hard materials with glass, ceramics and, and other materials as well, because it starts um, finding where they want to see their work located and it's a very uh, good experience for students. And again, I would end on, on this, the most sort of recent idea of where work has to respond and be uh, adaptive. And this student was site specific through lockdown and this work would have not been happening at all if we didn't have that kind of context. And actually a really beautiful work that was very site specific and a way of being able to use her sort of glass in a very sort of contemporary way um, uh, to, to deal with that adaptive, adaptiveness. So a hard materials student demonstrates an affinity with materials and processes, thinking by and through making, understanding of form, mass and three dimensionality, a real appreciation of craftsmanship, um, not to be had overnight, but again, to understand that craftsmanship is something we honour and really respect, and to have that ultimate passion, um, which I always think is very particular, for hard materials that actually passion comes with, with people who come to us. And that's what we, we will continue to, to look forward to. So thank you. That's, that's the presentation for applied materials. And I'm, I'm happy to receive any questions now, or anybody can email me and I will get back to anybody um, very quickly on that. Thank you, that was very interesting. Thank you. I'm just going to put, put out my email. If people do want to contact me, just writing it now. Um, I have no problem and I'm more than happy to, to, do, to write to anybody because it mightn't be until you think sort of a wee bit late or a question that you might have and I'm, I mightn't have covered it. So I, I would be expecting this even if we were on campus, um, you know, meeting students that, um, that actually there are often uh, additional questions people have after the event. So there is my email just if people uh, want to sort of have that for later. Yes, uh, I can answer Patricia, it can, absolutely, it is. It is about the student who might have um, those interests to go down product. So that idea of designing for tiles, um, absolutely. We've done it in the past for innovation voucher projects. We've often done, done that in the past, worked with sort of uh, clients who want that. Um, now that we're sort of sitting under fine art, it is a way of sort of actually saying, well, we don't want to lose the students who would have an interest in working with sort of creating new tiles or working with that idea of new wall finishes. So those ideas of, of sort of people wanting to kind of have that leaning uh, to sort of product design, 
that's why we're sitting in the middle, in that middle space between design and fine art, because we actually do cross over. And a lot of the teaching um, experience has come through design. So we, we're, we're actually very comfortable in making those sort of overtures and outward looking to design, because that's where our roots are from. So it's, 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 if you have that interest and that leaning, that's, that's where the work will take you because that's where we'll forge it. Um, you know, so it is about if that's your interest, absolutely. Um, there, well, there's as much theory and essay writing in, in, in all of the, you know, courses. So it's not a, a different um, theory. There isn't a sort of a different ask. So there's one day a week where there's critical cultures, which is an important framing um, that all students get, you know, in first year and in second year. What I would say, and it might be that, that this is what you want to know, that in some ways within hard materials, there is what it's sort of, I'll, I'll call it, you know, that, that Bible, that sort of archive of um, the skills and the techniques. And that actually is such an important resource. And students really do pride um, themselves for having that because that becomes the Bible. Um, for your techniques when you sort of leave college. So that idea of there's pertinent skills that all need to be recording within, you know, hard materials, but then the, the theory essay writing that you're talking about, those are, are sort of components that are in critical cultures. Um, so the essay writing uh, is more to do with critical cultures. I hope, I hope that makes sense, uh, Juliet. Uh, yes, it, it could be that you could start experimenting with wood, but, but I think there's the argument of starting it with these other materials that are traditional to tile makings, and then you might move it into wood. So we don't, we don't do wood per se as a workshop within hard materials, but that idea of you sort of... Um, moving your work to that is possible, but we don't start off with a sort of skill set of woodwork. That, if, if that makes sense um, on that, Patricia. But the idea of sort of moving it into, you know, working for sort of, say, bricks, or that idea of building coverings, exactly, that, that is sort of something that it could be really interesting. So if, if, if there is any more questions or Michelle, what, what would you like me to do at this point? Do you need much anonymity? No. Because, um, uh, so Hannah, in terms of, no, that's what you're coming to be with us uh, for. So it would be presumed that you wouldn't necessarily have had that exposure to, say, um, you know, firing um, ceramics or working with glass. And that's why that sort of list of, you know, sort of asking yourself, Am I interested in working with my hands with these type of materials 
or do I think of myself more interested in working two dimensionally? Am I image based or am I about form? So I think it's about sort of asking, asking yourself what what drives you, because the whole point is by coming to us, we're sort of teasing out those things that we we think we can identify in you but you wouldn't be knowing it yet. So no, you don't have to be coming, <laughs> you don't have to be coming with a degree in order to start your degree, because what, what we want is to be able to sort of tease that out and give you that experience, because we're, we're aware that for many people, you mightn't have this in the school or in the you know, portfolio course that you'll be able to, um, to do. So uh, when you come into first year, there will be opportunities for you to sort of be interdisciplinary within first year and then being able to sort of, spec, you know, to have um, area experience of what is that you could come into. You might be interested in trying, I don't know, visual communications and say hard materials. So there's an opportunity to try that out in their experience before you commit to sort of going, oh, no, actually, I, that's, the, that's the pathway I'd like to be. But I think it's more to do with yourself sort of going, oh, I love making. I, I like actually working and experimenting through, you know, through my hands and through making. And that there's sort of clues within that that possibly you'll be there going, actually, I, I could make the change over really easy, even though I don't know everything about ceramics or glass. And that's what you'd be coming to us for, if you like. So I, I hope that makes sense, uh, Hannah. Thanks. Thanks. I mean, it definitely is to, to sort of for everybody, anybody applying to college should be about it is about experimentation for that first while. Some people know exactly what areas they want to do. Others don't. And so it is about finding, you know, understanding that some of that time is about experimentation. It's trying. It's sort of saying to yourself, Oh, that didn't work. But actually, if something didn't work, it's huge learning. So we don't mind if things go a bit pear-shaped and, and the students always sort of feel slightly under pressure that they need to know the answer from the day they start in college. And actually it isn't. It is about a journey. And for many students, they sort of go, oh no, I, I want this or I want, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, now that I've experienced it for a while, actually I'm now sort of seeing there's other interests. So there has to be, and it's encouraged that there is a time of sort of searching and finding where, where the right place um, suits you. You'll find in applied materials where, in, and I would say that all areas will say this, but we're very adaptable to that idea of students sort of being, you know, quite designy, or quite fine art, or quite teacher, you know, if you're wanting to go and do the joint course. So there's a lot of opportunity to be able to understand there's a lot of transferable skills, and that there's a real, um, there's a lot of uh, sort of appreciation for those that make in applied materials, because we have sort of knowledges and methodologies that other people don't have. So it's to sort of feel happy that you're there going, actually, I am learning through this experimenting and I'm able to sort of identify what I'm good at. So, as I say, it's not to feel under the pressure that day one in NCAD, you have to know what you want to do and that you're kind of stuck in it for the next three years. And that's not the case at all. There's a lot of movement around and there's a lot of opportunities with um, um, what's called Studio Plus and Erasmus that allows students again, and that's in your third year, where there's that potential of actually doing something that your own department or discipline isn't doing. So it's allowing you all the time to find sort of new opportunities, new contexts and, and, and new skills uh, to sort of add to your repertoire. So it is much more fluid than I think there's sort of the impression, and I know that first years are always very anxious about this idea of needing to know from day one, and it, it, it really isn't. It really isn't. 
in terms of applying to us for the first time in applied materials, again, we're on the CAO forums um, where we hadn't been before, we have been under fine art. So it gives you another opportunity to tick box the disciplines as well as actually tick boxing. Actually, I'll put myself down for uh, common entry as well. So it gives you more opportunities this way of either identifying you know, the pathways within applied materials and also ticking, no, I want to go in under um, common entry. So it's just more choices and more visibility for the applied materials.